Hi, and welcome back. This month, I want to talk a little bit about why I'm in a wheelchair. And I wanted to do it during August because August is Spinal Muscular Atrophy Awareness Month, or SMA, which happens to be my diagnosis. Um, I'm going to go ahead and apologize in advance if you can hear anything in the background. It's because Jessica has several virtual meetings she has to attend today, so the door is closed, but sound does carry. And Ferdinand is over there licking himself to death in the chair. So again, I'm sorry. So as I said, my diagnosis is spinal muscular atrophy or SMA, and it is the number one genetic killer of infants. Uh, it is an inherited disorder that affects the nerves in your spinal cord that attach to all of your skeletal muscles, so those voluntary muscles, the muscles that you can choose to move, so things used in uh, eating, like chewing or swallowing, in standing and walking, obviously. Uh, anything that you can think of that you can voluntarily choose to do, those muscles are affected. Now, what happens is those nerves in your spinal cord are unable to send messages or they send them infrequently or not strong enough, those messages out to your muscles, which makes your body think that you're not using your muscles. And so your body allows those muscles to kind of die away or atrophy, right? So we lose muscle mass that prohibits us from doing certain things. Now there are about four different main types of SMA. They are all characterized by the age of onset, so when you start showing symptoms of weakness or atrophy, um, as well as, of course, the genetic component. But we'll talk more about that in next week. So type one is the most severe. It's also the most common. Uh, now, Typically, type 1 infants usually die before the age of 2, and their symptoms are quite severe. They're usually never even able to hold their head up at all. Um, usually, you start seeing symptoms between 3 and 6 months of age, sometimes earlier, sometimes later, but generally, you start seeing symptoms very, very early in life. Type two uh, is a little bit less severe. So as we go up, they get less and less severe. Usually you start showing symptoms between uh, seven and 18 months of age. Um, usually you wouldn't be able to sit yourself up, but if you are in a seated position, you can hold it pretty well. Uh, you're usually never able to walk. Um, but it's a much higher survival rate as well. Type 3 usually doesn't present until a little bit later in life, so um, 18 months to even into adolescence. And a lot of times you're able to walk at least a little bit earlier in life, and then as it progresses, you lose that ability and you'll end up needing a wheelchair as well. And then lastly, there is type four, which is the adult onset. So usually you don't even start showing symptoms at all until about age 35. So it is the least severe. Now it is important, it is important to note that the symptoms in each type are on a, a sliding scale. There's no one size fits all. Um, just because you are diagnosed with, say, type 3 doesn't mean you can't have symptoms or severity that you can find in type 2. So it's a, it's a nice broad scale, right? It's a spectrum. So I have type 
too. So I'm not the most severe, but I'm also not the least severe. And I was diagnosed through a muscle biopsy. Uh, genetic testing wasn't too readily available in the 80s when I was diagnosed. Uh, so I do have a muscle biopsy diagnosis, which is pretty common with people around my age. Uh, so I can hold a seated position, right? I, I'm sitting up now. Uh, I can't pull myself up into a seated position, but once I'm there, I'm fine usually. Now I've never been able to walk, um, unless you count in a swimming pool, but I actually can't do that anymore either. So I, I do kind of remember being able to walk or, well maybe not walk, crawl on my knees using like a little walker when I was really young. Um, I could be imagining that, but I've I really feel like I remember that. Um, but as with a lot of neuromuscular disorders, I began to develop scoliosis, which is pretty common in SMA. Uh, and so if scoliosis progresses, well, you can have a lot of uh, respiratory issues. And with SMA, you also can have respiratory issues as the muscles you use in breathing are voluntary, they are affected. And so to prevent any more respiratory issues that would be on top of SMA, uh, my parents, of course, decided to correct my scoliosis during a, a spinal fusion. And so I was in a full body cast for probably several months. I remember, I think it was purple. <laughs> uh, but after I had gotten out of that body cast and I really wasn't able to do anything for so long, I did lose the ability to even use the walker or even to just stand there using it on my knees. Uh, and so shortly after, I was probably three, four, five, somewhere around in there when I had that surgery. Uh, and so shortly after that is when I got my first wheelchair, which I believe was also purple. <laughs> Other than that, that was really the only time I remember and I don't even know if I remember that I was really young but where I had an ability and then all of a sudden I didn't have it anymore which is pretty common with SMA I think I've been lucky enough where my progression because it is progressive you will over time lose more and more muscle mass and more and more abilities that go with that um, but I have been lucky enough that mine has been, for the most part, pretty gradual, pretty uh, slow in progression. And so I don't have any more memories where one day I was able to do something and then I remember the day where I couldn't do it anymore. And I think a lot of people actually with SMA have those memories and I've been really lucky that mine's been so slow in progression. So for example, someone may remember the day where they were once able to lift a cup up and drink on their own and then they can remember the day when they were no longer able to do that and I I don't have any of those memories I don't remember specific days when I've lost abilities I've held my plateaus for pretty long periods of time and it's been very very slow now I, I know this was a very generalized broad overview of SMA and so if you guys have any questions um, by all means please ask. I will be happy to answer them if I can. Um, in the coming weeks we will go into of course what causes SMA and we'll talk about the different treatment options that are or will be available uh, as well as my own personal treatment story so how I got started in the treatment that I'm receiving currently. So I hope some of this sounds a little interesting and that you guys will come back and join us for this month of August. And we'll see you in next week's video. Bye.